Good morning. I think the very definition of the deep state is when the intelligence communities withhold information from Congress. Today there's a CIA briefing going on right now for which most rank and file senators and congressmen have been excluded. I think it's wrong for the CIA to have expressed a conclusion that the Crown <laughs> Prince was involved with the killing of Khashoggi and then withhold that information. I know about the information of the CIA's conclusions only by reading it in the media. If I were in the briefing today, I would ask the CIA director several items. Was the Crown Prince's brother communicating with Khashoggi, telling him it was fine to go to the consulate in Istanbul? Were there text messages sent back from the killers to the Crown Prince's office? Was there phone conversation between the Crown Prince and the killers? Some are saying there is no smoking gun. Well, what's being reported is that there is a smoking gun. There's communication directly from the killers back to the Crown Prince's office. I think the time has come for the Senate to grab back foreign policy and say that, you know what? The president, no president, this president or the previous president, has the power to take our country to war with Saudi Arabia and Yemen without the permission of the Senate. Senator, you said Senator, you said you said you said state is involved, but isn't it the White House that's preventing right. the CIA director from briefing the full Senate? The definition of the deep state is when intelligence communities have so much power that there's no oversight. I've been arguing for probably nearly a decade that with intelligence it's only given to a few people within our system. That's more like an oligarchy. Only eight people. It has nothing to do with Trump. Not everything's about Trump. There are eight people in Congress who get briefings on intelligence. That is not democracy. That is not democratic representation, nor is it democratic oversight. I think the information needs to be shared widely with those who are elected. Why should someone elected in California get the information and someone in Kentucky not get the information? It doesn't make any sense. What, what, what did leaders tell you as to the reason why you aren't getting briefing? The full Senate was briefed last week. Well, no, I came to the full Senate briefing, but there was no briefing from the CIA. And what I'm concerned about are the public statements from members of the administration who say there's no direct evidence. Well, to me, it sounds fairly direct if there was communication going on between the killers in Istanbul and the Crown Prince's office in Saudi Arabia. Here's the thing the media has missed. Here's the question you need to ask Pompeo and Mattis. They keep saying there's no direct evidence. Ask them, do they disagree with the CIA's conclusions? You see, they're answering a question they want to answer. They're not answering the real question. If the CIA has looked at all of this information and says with a high degree of probability that we think the Crown Prince was involved, does Secretary Mattis and Secretary Pompeo disagree with the conclusions? That's not what they're saying. Did you ask them that last week? I, I can't go into anything I've asked them in a classified hearing, but I'm saying I would, if I were in the media, ask them, do you disagree with the conclusions? My guess is if they're honest, they'll tell you they don't disagree with the conclusions, that the constellation and compilation of all the facts are that, yes, he was involved. But we're playing a game of words here. No direct evidence, no smoking gun. Well, I think that's, you know, open to uh, argument. I really think that if there's direct communication, the media has reported that the Crown Prince's brother directly communicated with Khashoggi, and then the media is also reporting that there's communications in Istanbul going to the Crown Prince's office at the time of the killing. I would want to know more about that to help me make a conclusion. But the definition of the deep state is rank and file people are excluded from oversight. I can have no oversight and the deep state simply means that intelligence community has too much power. Too much power that's independent of representative oversight. It has nothing to do with which president there is. I'd say the same whether it was a Democrat president or a Republican. Senator, Senator just to be clear, whatever the specific information here might be that you know, the Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense can come and speak broadly about it, sure that's no problem, but the, to get into the specifics is a whole different, a whole different scenario. All right. I think there are are reasons why you wouldn't want to get into the specifics of, you know, who listens to who on the phone. The only reason I'm saying it is not because I heard it in, I haven't been in, in the intelligence uh, briefing to hear that. I read it in the newspaper. Now you can argue why that shouldn't be presented because it reveals our, uh, our abilities to eavesdrop. But I would say that now the information is out there. I think the conclusion shouldn't be classified. So for example, the newspaper has, has, has written that the CIA has concluded with high probability that the Crown Prince was involved. That doesn't sound to me like something classified. How you come about it, all the details, you can see how some of that has to be classified. But the conclusion, see not only is it classified, 
it's being prevented, you know, uh, rank and file members are being prevented from even hearing it. If I can follow up, how does not having that information make it harder to make policy decisions like the Yemen resolution that you guys are looking at now? Right. Well, I think it's incredibly important that we discuss that the CIA is with high probability said a leader of a foreign country killed and dismembered a person in the consulate. I mean, people have said, oh, people kill people all the time. Tell me another time in which someone was killed and dismembered in a consulate where you're supposed to have this protection, this international protection. No, I think it's extraordinary what happened, but it's on the heels of bad behavior by Saudi Arabia. It's on the heels of a, an unjust war killing civilians in Yemen. It's on the heels of irrational behavior blockading Qatar. It's also on the heels of Saudi Arabia having nearly a thousand people in prison who have had no trial, that have been in prison for over a year. Saudi Arabia has a young man by the name of Barik al Nimr who was 17 when he was picked up at a rally. He is on death row and set to be executed and crucified. So there's a game being played. Oh, we're going to let women drive, but we're still going to execute and, and crucify people. Senator, just to be clear, you asked to attend this briefing I was not notified of the hearing. In fact, I just passed a, a senator or a Democrat senator on the way over here and asked him about it. He had not heard of it. So we're reading about this in the media. So I can't even ask to be included in it because I didn't know it was going to happen, except for reading about it in the media. That's not the way it should be. She should have come and testified before all senators. And if you have some senators that are more equal than others, that is not democratic representation. Every senator is equal and has equal, it should have equal access to the intelligence. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. <laughs> Uh, that makes sense. Uh.